Yes, I was born in uh, Palo Alto, Stanford Hospital in 1945. And uh, tell me about your family. I lived in Palo Alto for three years. My father was at that time at Stanford University, and I have two older sisters. And uh, we moved quite a bit from West Coast to East Coast, to Baghdad, Iraq, to Paris, to Switzerland. My father worked for UNESCO as well as was a professor of physics. So between those two jobs, there was a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. And I am aware that in every single move, she went out of her way to get on a bus or on a train or subway or whatever was necessary to get me to either music or dance schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is really what saved my life. Well, I married him not legally when I was 17 in Paris. Uh -huh. And we were married under the Napoleonic Code, which uh, if, you, if I read it now, I think I'd be shocked at wh what I said yes what to. What you said yes to. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very uh, interesting little wedding at the courthouse with two witnesses, our two friends. And then the big discussion about what should Mimi do with her life came up in the family after that. And Had the family given you permission to marry? Not in the least. No. 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 It was very hidden and secret, and it was kind of my rebellious move mm -hmm. at age mm -hmm. 17. We came back to the States and lived here for three years. The intention was to go back to Europe. Uh -huh. We never made it. You were quite successful, weren't you? I mean, mm -hmm. the two of you were very well. You had your quite a following. And right? niche, yeah, uh -huh, very uh -huh. much so. Uh -huh. That was difficult to let go when it, when it dropped. What happened? Well, he died in a motorcycle accident. And uh, we were at, at a peak, and his novel had just been, he was at a book signing party, in fact. So he had just uh, accomplished his big goal, his big ambition to write a novel. Yes, I think... Joni was the one most influential person, and she enjoyed that role, um, so it didn't stop. Mm -hmm. And in trying to develop on my own, I will always have her as part of me. I think the person, if there was a role model who I had in mind when I started Bread and Roses, although it, it itself was the idea of a cousin of mine and how it came into being, included many, many different people and thoughts mm -hmm. and feelings. But I had been impressed by a British woman, a girlfriend of my mother's, when I was from three on, I remember her being in our lives. Rosemary Goodenough uh, founded Friends Outside and had been a close friend to my mother and had been in, in and out of my life. Whenever we were on the West Coast, she was part of mm -hmm. our family life. It took about a year of thinking and wondering if I could pull something off that was so different in my life. And then one day decided to pick up the phone and call a bunch of institutions in Marin County because my tour, a tour, had finished and there's that empty space when you get off the road. And from there it snowballed much faster than I was ever aware. In the thinking it through stages I was not planning what specific things to do, it was more dreaming mm -hmm. of what, what the feelings would be, who would benefit, how would it work. To, to benefit everyone involved, performers and patients alike. So with a very unplanned approach, a kind of unorthodox way to begin a nonprofit, it almost began itself. And uh, phone calls were made to friends saying, this is my idea, does it appeal to you, could you help me? And it was an, an inspiring idea, I think, to a handful of my friends.